about polygons, polymor, I don't know, what do you call this? Polycubes on the internet? <laughs> no, I'm not rich enough to buy one of these. Uh, not at all right now. So if you want to check me out on Patreon, patreon.com slash Joe, that would be nice. Uh, because a friend of mine, really nice guy, super nice guy, well, he's been waiting a long time. I think he was using the first gen Core i9 with a bunch of 1080 Ti's. He's got one lent to me here as well and he finally decided to make the the change which is crazy because this would be effectively like six times the processor so i get to unbox it and i get to that's why i've got two 360 mil rads here we're gonna overclock the ever living snot out of it Poof! Oh, i'm doing it i'm opening it up oh oh, oh. Okay, I opened it. So yeah, uh, I wasn't thinking that the retails were actually gonna come with this cool cube thing, or I keep calling it a cube, but, oh, and it's even got a magnet in it. That is super cool, but they do, and uh, that's nice. I mean, it's way nicer than, this is what my shitty Core i5 came in, and it's the ninth generation. Couldn't you make this box a little nicer? You know, I know this is super cool. So. How, this is like one of those, uh, you know, those guys that do tricks or, oh, there's, it's actually this easy, but those boxes, like little treasure boxes, you have to like find out how to open. There we go. We got it. Boom. So I guess you just had to tilt it. And then this seems to be the magic drawer. You do like special, you have to like pull the cube and then shake it and then put a magnet to it in a spot and it opens. My wife's been watching those lately. So how do you, how do you open it? I feel like that. Oh, ho, 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 ho. it's like cracking open an egg. There you go. So, ninth gen soldered 9900K. Everyone's been covering it to death. And I'm going to be doing maybe a little bit different content with it later on in the week. So, we're going to, yeah, we're going to overclock the Everest Living Sound out of it with two 360 mil rads. One's a double wide. And uh, just see how high, far we can get it. It was really, really cold here last week, and I was thinking of putting a couple rods outside, but it's like minus, or uh, plus three today, so I don't really see what the point of that is, but uh, yeah, there we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this locked in a system, and the point of today's video is just to get the highest Cinebench score ever possible with an eight-core processor, and uh, you know, that'll be the fun of it today, because that's the kind of dude that I am, but I really do enjoy this packaging. Good on you, Intel, for doing that finally, but I mean, it's no Threadripper. So yeah, this is what, like $90 worth of the freaking total of what you're paying for is just for this plastic cube, I'm sure. Let's put her in, get her locked in on my uh, Gigabyte Aorus Pro Wi-Fi. What is it? Z390 Aorus Pro Wi-Fi, yes. And uh, we're gonna see how far we can take it with a 12 phase VRM. She's all up and running here. Oh, this is going to be fun. So, I wanted to go through the testing setup. We've got the Core i9-9900K plugged into the Gigabyte Aorus Gaming Pro Wi-Fi. Probably named that. Uh, it's like, still, all of them have the really good VRM, uh, the Z390. So, it's a uh, 12-phase VRM. So, we're not going to have any problems there. So, you've got an Enermax pump that uh, has an adjustable RPM speed. And you can literally just use this remote. That's why I love this pump. It will go up to 4,000, over 4,000 RPM uh, with these buttons. And then we are going into a double wide Alpha Cool 360 mil rad that is then fed into a uh, single wide 360 mil rad from XSPS that's being controlled, uh, the fans on it, by this Reven controller here. So I'm going to be able to just turn these and crank up the fan speeds. That's heading into the Alpha Cool block. And we've got, uh, you know, the Gigabyte motherboard. We've got an uh, EVGA GTX 1080 Ti, which I'm 
I'm also borrowing from my buddy, so thanks very much. And uh, that's uh, 30, uh, sorry, uh, 4266 memory, 16 gigs of it from G-Skill, so we're going to bump that up to 3600 megahertz. And uh, it's CL probably 16 or something like that. We'll, we'll, we'll dial in and all. We'll, we're going for some fun stuff. And then that's on my, actually my daily driver PC, which I've been using the Core i5 on. But, you know, I'm not going to take the motherboard out of there because whatever. This um, I only have this for a few days, so we'll see what we can do. We'll probably put a regular AIO back on this at the end. But my whole idea is I want to see how far we can take this with ambient cooling, even if it's this extreme. Like, no one's got these two rads in a case only cooling the CPU. And I just, I can tell already the temperatures are out of control on this CPU, and everyone says that. But even, uh, what we'll get into in just a sec. So I'll go ahead and I'll lock the camera in, and then we'll begin our baseline testing and just see, I want to just destroy a Cinebench, you know, I just want to get crazy, but I've already got some Cinebench rolling here, and I can tell it's going to be a lot of fun, so let's go ahead and hook her up, get her locked in, and uh, we'll, we'll make her happen. Okay, so we're all plugged in, we're ready to go, and uh, I have a monitor hooked up behind here, and they're just duplicating. Uh, I can't run my Elgato right now, Just to, it would just be too hard to do right now, so I've got this weird setup going on, but bear with me. So, welcome to... Jimmy Joe's overclocking 9900K extravaganza, and I think we should have a lot of fun. And I'll try and do some, if you have suggestions for what you want to see the 9900K do in like a couple of videos, I've got maybe, I got until Friday, so I could do like two, three videos on this thing. Uh, but I'd love some interesting stuff that's going to get views, not just, you know, the testing that everyone's already done, because I only have the CPU for a couple days, and I want to do some fun stuff with it. It's a very fun, powerful CPU. So we can already see we're getting 1985 in Cinebench. I've got all the processes killed and stuff like that. And we see here with this extreme cooling setup, I'm only running the pump at 1500 RPM, and those fans aren't getting any faster because they're hooked up to an external controller. And then we have, uh, this is actually plugged right into the motherboard and we feel some VRM cooling over, ouch, here. I always fucking do that. See, 1985, very, very, very consistently. So uh, we see that the will turbo up to five gigahertz, but it's only hitting like uh, 4,700 during the Cinebench, I think until like maybe the last second. Let's see if it actually darts up at all there. But the temperatures are already hitting 70 degrees. And I'm sorry, there's gonna be some fan noise well, we run these because of the way I've got this all set up. 1985, very consistently there. So that's interesting. So if we look at the temperatures it's hitting, one core is hitting 74 degrees uh, at stock with this extreme a cooling solution. That means that if you put an, an Octua NHG 15 on this thing, like the best air cooler you can get, it's probably going to be in the 90s at stock speeds. That is ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous. So... You're not here to watch stock speeds. You're here to watch overclock. So we're just gonna we're gonna go overclock it right now. Uh, we'll say to five gigahertz and see, because that's probably achievable. How that affects the Cinebench score, because that's what you're here for, right? Cinebench scores. Okay. So uh, I've just adjusted the memory timings and stuff. Although this is a 3266 megahertz at CL19 kit, it will never ever ever do that, of course. But uh, I've adjusted it to 3600 megahertz at CL15. So very, very fast memory, and if we run this uh, in priority mode, my uh, before at 3600 at CL19, it was getting uh, 2175, so we'll see if we break that here. I believe it will. I don't know if that hurt our performance or helps our performance, but... Oh, there we go, 2192! Ooh, so it did, it helped out our score a little bit. So that's very, very good. So now we can start hitting 5.2 gigahertz i think that that should be very very achievable with this setup so i'll go ahead and rock some settings in there and i'll show you what's going on and then we'll come back and we'll try and break 2500 and send a bench yeah right <laughs> and i believe we're we're frozen I should be able to move the mouse. I believe we're frozen. Oh, shit! 2233, motherfucker! <laughs> okay, we're getting somewhere. That's that's a pretty good score. So what, what were we talking for thermals there? We have one core hit 91 degrees. So thermals isn't a problem. And, like, I don't think... Yeah, like, this has a really good VRM on it. The heat sinks aren't even really that warm. 
and there's a fan right beside here taking heat out of there. So let's see if I close hardware monitor, make sure a couple other processes, maybe we can run this one more time and then maybe we can go a little further. Oh, 2247. It's pretty good. Okay, so we're hit, we're getting somewhere. 5.2 gigahertz with this extreme cooling setup. What are we gonna have to hit for volts to go any higher? I wonder. And there's no stepping. I have to go to 5.3 on Ryzen. I could go to uh, 5.225. Now you can increase the uh, BCLK a little bit, but that's not ideal because then everything gets overclocked uh and that's only gonna give us like maybe 25 megahertz it's not gonna go too much higher point yeah so all right we're going so we're getting somewhere this is fun I have Cinebench loaded. I've got my Canadian chiller that I've created. I've got a push pull on the first rad that then goes into this rad that's submerged into about, you know, third of the way up with watery snow ice, which I put mostly snow in there, but then melted with a bit of hot water to get, you know, thermal going. I can feel the cold air blowing at me from that rad. And our uh, <laughs> idle temperatures are now like, 17 15 degrees so it's working it's not doing too bad job we haven't even hit 60 degrees on windows load in here or anything i've run since so all our tasks are shut off and i'm at 5.3 gigahertz i could never get it to run at like 1.48 volts this is going to be interesting that's further than i've ever made it Oh, oh, that's, it's how it's working. <laughs> oh, 5.3 gigahertz, 2213. That's not a better, but we're getting somewhere. Okie dokie, folky. I did a little bit of testing. We still got nine degrees. We got, wait. Negative two degrees. There we go. So I've done a little bit of swapping into BIOS. We'll look at it in a moment, but I believe we are at critical juncture here for my goal for today. And it's looking go to detail. It's looking good. So we're going to set priority to a real time. Change that priority, bitch. Close this out. Bring this full screen. We're going to cross our little thingies. We're hitting go. <laughs> Ah, uh, it's probably frozen. It would have something would have happened by now. Oh! Ah! Sir 2303, motherfuckers! <laughs> Alright, we're not going any further than that, I don't think. Really don't. <laughs> well, not without going very much higher on the V core than I really ever want to. You wanna look at this uh this hardware monitor? We'll see if it'll run again. This is pretty cool. We're uh, at about 15 degrees idle on some of the cores. And uh, she's cold, definitely. My snow is melting, that's for sure. And But the, uh, the, the pipes are all cold. So I definitely introduced some chilling factor into this. But uh, essentially, uh, this is the specs. I'm at 50, uh, 53 multiplier. I haven't done anything else. I might tune one more time here, but uh, we have a little bit of uh 1.495 volts like i was like hesitant to go to 1.5 this is not my chip and i already think i'm going to get some interesting looks when i hand this back to him after he watches this video thank you very much keith you are the man so yes we're running uh 5.3 gigahertz which is like something I, I was easily attainable with 
a little bit of extreme cooling on the, I think, even 8700K. But to reach that with the extra two cores in there, it's just, it's bananas, and you need to fill a bucket full of snow and put a 360 huge rad in there to even make her happen. But uh, you want to look at temperatures while she's running? Let's make it happen. Run. Ooh, we're in real time. Let's see if it'll run twice in a row. I'm actually surprised how well that worked. 2300 in Cinebench with an 8-core processor. Aw, oh, she, she died. Dang, nab it. So we're not even hitting 81, more than 81 degrees on any of the cores while it's running Cinebench. Yeah, we're at 1.57 V-Core with load line calibration. Oh my goodness. That is ridiculous. So I'll go ahead and post some Fire Strike scores on there once I'm completed and uh, Time Spy. And uh, yeah, we'll finish this video off today. we're done for today and uh boy howdy that was a lot of fun that was a lot of fun thank you very much keith you're the man i'm sorry i pushed your chip so far but at least now you know what the max is it's you know i, I wouldn't run this over five gigahertz unless you had some pretty crazy cooling i will uh do some sort of follow-up with this in the next coming days. If you have any, uh, you know, thing you want run on an eight core Intel processor, I had a suggestion to run Windows XP on this chip. I thought that might be funny. Uh, but uh, just to some, you know, do some final things here. Time Spy, we got a 10,713 with an overclocked to about uh, 2,050 megahertz EVGA. Uh, just, it's not even like one of the good uh, high end one, 1080 Ti's. So you might be able to get a little bit more, but 1080 Ti's, they pretty much cap out at 2100 no matter what model you get. So uh, yeah, we're getting a 10,577 in graphics score, a 11,562 in the CPU department, and then uh, Fire Strike 27031, that's a very, very, very good score for an 8-core processor. Very, very good. Graphics score, one of the highest I've ever seen, 31,416, with a physics score of 27,859. That's very, 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 very good. So 27 then, uh, just ran super position in case you care about that. Uh, 23,156 on the medium preset. Uh, I always think it's funner to run on the medium preset, that way you're, you know, you're, you're more GPU bound. Uh, so yeah, or yeah, C yeah, CPU bound, sorry. Anyways, that way you're more CPU bound. Pretty good. So that's the best score I've probably ever seen in Superposition too. So, not not too bad. Now I've run uh, the uh, Threadripper 16 core processor. That's the most cores I've ever played with. But the gaming performance on Intel is way above Threadripper one. It's like you get better graphic results by far with this system for sure. So thanks very much to Keith. 2300 in Cinebench. I thought maybe we'd get a little higher than that, but that was my goal, and we met it, and uh, that was at uh, 5.3 gigahertz at 1.5 volts almost. It, it went even higher than that with LLC going on. But all it took was a bucket full of snow, and if you love Timmy Joe, I have shirts. You can go get this Stop Staring at My GPU shirt. You can go follow me on Patreon, where you would have known about all this stuff uh, a day or two ahead of time because I was posting updates about things and stuff. I put little teasers on Twitter sometimes, but you get a lot of information on Patreon. So if you like the weird stuff I do, it would help me out if I get a few Patreon subscribers. And uh, yeah, we're going to give this chip back by Friday. So if you have any suggestions on some things we could do with an eight-word Intel processor that would get views and like be interesting over just like the stuff everyone else does, let me know in the comments below. But as always, I'm Matt. Watch to meet Joe Instagram and Twitter. And I want to thank you very, very much for coming to my channel to watch me put a radiator in a bucket full of snow so we could overclock an Intel processor that has no business going to 5.3 gigahertz. Stay frosty. Ew.